Welcome to Mobile Impact 101, Taking Your Cause Mobile. Today we are going to be joined by Darian rodriguez Heyman, and I'll do a brief introduction of him before I hand off and get us started. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization for about six years, having um, come prior to that with a decade of experience working at small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I was often the accidental techie trying to solve the day-to-day -day tech problems at an office where we had no tech staff. So I'm glad to be with you as your host today. You'll also see and hear from our expert presenter, Darian rodriguez Heyman, who is the co-founder and chief development officer at Better World Wireless. You may also know of him from his work at social, uh, social Media for Nonprofits, or from his experience at the Craigslist Foundation where he did wonderful events like the Nonprofit Boot Camp um, that I used to love attending when I was on staff at some of those smaller nonprofits. You'll also see assisting in the chat window, Ali Bezdikian who is an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. She'll be there to help answer your questions and grab them in the chat window and help you with any audio issues throughout the webinar. A quick look at today's agenda. We'll do a, a fast introduction of TechSoup in case you're not familiar with who we are. We'll take a moment to poll where you're at with mobile currently so that we can customize and tailor our information today a little bit to the audience that's on the line with us right now. And then Darian will take us into why mobile, how to get off the ground, give us some info on tips and tools that you can access and use. And then we'll talk a little bit about the new offer that Better World Wireless has just introduced into the TechSoup catalog. Um, and then we'll have time for Q&A. So who is TechSoup? We are a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, foundation, charity, social benefit organization on the planet can access the library resources and technology they need to work at their full potential. We have served more than 200,000 charitable organizations in more than 60 countries around the world. We are continually offering new products and donations through our programs including consulting services, Windows 8.1, and new lines of products like QuickBooks 2014, and also things like mobile access through companies like Better World Wireless. You can find all of this and more at TechSoup.org. Now let's dive us into the topic at hand. I'd like to invite Darian rodriguez Heyman to the line to share a little bit more about his experience and Better World Wireless, and to start us into the topic of how to take your cause mobile. Thanks so much for joining us on the program, Darian. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Becky, and really excited to be with all of you today. Uh, so we're going to dive into it. Um, I know that uh, in the agenda that Becky just walked you through Q&A was at the end, but I want to encourage folks to ask questions at any point in time uh, if anything that I'm saying isn't clear or if you have any questions specific to your organization. Uh, so let's get into it. You heard a little bit about my background running Craigslist Foundation, starting social media for nonprofits. Uh, the other thing that I did in the past was I wrote a best-selling book called Nonprofit Management 101. And actually my friends at TechSoup uh, provided a chapter on web design for that. Um, most recently started a company called Better World Wireless and really looking at what it looks like to craft a mission-led mobile company. Uh, and so what we've done is we've implemented the buy one, give one model that Tom Shoes created. Uh, so for every customer that we sign up, we donate a free phone or tablet to women and girls in need. Uh, and our customers are all here in the U.S., and we really focus on serving nonprofits and helping them save money with their mobile plans. Uh, we're the first company to introduce a plan where you only pay for what you use. So instead of getting trapped into a plan that's bigger than you need so you don't get those overage fees, uh, we can help nonprofits save some money. So uh, I should mention that as part of the launch of the company, and TechSoup is our launch partner, uh, we're really excited about that. We just launched a couple weeks ago. As part of that, we are launching a four-part webinar series starting with today's program. So today we're really going to cover the basics and, and look at a primer across all aspects of mobile. Um, moving into the next webinar on June 5th, uh, Amy Semple-Ward from Intend will cover mobile content strategy. So really once you have a mobile presence, what do you say and how do you leverage the platform? 
Then we'll move into fundraising uh, from our friends at PayPal and Network for Good who have a white paper coming out, and we'll be sharing some uh, really fresh off the presses data points uh, and research around mobile, uh, but also talking about best practices and tips and tools for raising more money through this new platform. And finally, we'll bring it home with Better World Wireless' CEO and our partner Upsource, uh, and they'll be talking really about what it looks like to integrate mobile into the operations and infrastructure of your company. Uh, and so that is really the agenda that we're going to be focused on with this four-part series. We'll also be partnering with TechSoup to create a mobile toolkit with a bunch of different resources, links, blogs, and articles uh, that nonprofits can access to make better use of this important technology. Really quickly, want to say that this series uh, would absolutely not be possible uh, without TechSoup, our host, and also the generous support of PayPal and Network for Good. Uh, and again, they're right in the process of releasing a new white paper on mobile fundraising for nonprofits. So you'll be hearing more about that soon. We're also really grateful to the partners that have helped spread the word about. Uh, about the Mobile Impact webinar series, and that includes Social Media for Nonprofits, the only conference series in the country focused on social media for social good, uh, as well as Volunteer Match, which helps volunteers uh, and nonprofits connect through the web, Mobile Beacon doing some great work providing discounted data services to nonprofits and hardware, uh, Intend does an amazing nonprofit technology conference and also has a very robust website. The Foundation Center is a great resource if you're looking to find out which foundations your nonprofit should be targeting for funding, and the Case Foundation has done a lot of great work in the social media arena. So Becky already painted the picture of what we're really going to talk about today, which is very quickly, why is mobile a big deal? I'm going to move through that quickly just because you probably wouldn't be on this webinar if you didn't already know that. Uh, what I'm really going to focus on is the ins and outs and how specifically um, how specifically you can actually get your nonprofit off the ground and start to uh, raise funds online and establish a robust uh, presence through mobile. Uh, and so that's really going to be the focal point of the agenda. So uh, first off, as Becky mentioned, it would be really helpful to do a quick poll and just get a sense of uh, you know, the capacity of the folks that are dialing in. So if people can take a quick minute to complete this poll, uh, would really appreciate your input in terms of the level uh, of capacity of your organization as it relates to mobile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, we can do it. All right. Getting lots of responses. Looks like none of the above is uh, heads and shoulders the most popular response. So it does indeed seem like uh, that you know a lot of the tips that I'm going to cover today in terms of how to get started and get off the ground will be very appropriate. So I'll make sure to cover those. So let's get into it. Uh, you know, first off, why is mobile a big deal? Uh, why are people paying attention to it? Why are people dialing into uh, into this webinar? Well, you know, first off, the reality is we as nonprofit leaders, we need to meet our community where they're at. And people are increasingly in the mobile environment. Uh, there's a huge amount of traffic there. And just from a, a really quick uh, you know, data standpoint to paint a picture of how pervasive these devices are, it is really the most popular tool in history. And, when, and just to put that in perspective, if you compare it to the toothbrush, there are more people on the planet that have access to a mobile phone than to a toothbrush. So this is a tool that is everywhere, uh, and it's also a great tool that your nonprofit can leverage for social change. Uh, you know, the good and the bad news, depending upon how you look at it, uh, is that people are addicted to their cell phones. Uh, and so most folks cannot go one hour without checking their phone. This is something that uh, you know, is a tool that people carry with them. They wake up. Uh, a lot of people have it within arm's reach of their bed. And so it's something that is part of, of everyone's life. And it's really an opportunity for your nonprofit to connect with people in a new environment. From a web standpoint, 
Uh, one interesting fact to note is that mobile Internet usage is actually overtaking desktop usage this year. And so this is where people are at. And again, the point here is you need to meet them where they're at. You need to be talking to them, whether it's from a fundraising, a marketing, or an advocacy standpoint, uh, meet folks on their own terrain. Uh, what are the applications of mobile as it relates to so what are the applications of mobile? Uh, from, a, from a nonprofit standpoint, really you can use them as a tool for anything that your organization does. That could be fundraising, uh, could be advocacy, could be marketing, could be interacting with volunteers, uh, and it also can be making your programs more efficient. Uh, so again, this is a tool for change, and it's something that has been historically underutilized by nonprofits. That's something that we're hoping to change today. Uh, and really, again, focusing on some tips that you can use to get your organization off the ground with mobile. Um, okay, so first off, before we dive into tips, uh, those of you that have been to social media for nonprofits or have heard me do webinars on social media for social good, know that the first step to any strategy, especially when you're using a new medium and new tools, is to plan for success, is to take a step back so you can take a leap forward and really ask yourself the question, what does success look like? What are we trying to achieve here? When it comes to mobile, uh, you know, what I would suggest, and I have created this mobile matrix which I'm happy to email out to folks. I'm also going to post uh, right now a quick link that um, uh, is for a blog I just wrote on Intense website. Uh, and it really speaks specifically about uh, here we go, broadcast all. It speaks specifically about the mobile matrix. The idea here is you want to ask yourself, as it relates to our donors, how do we use mobile to get more money in the door? How do we use it to get money in the door more efficiently? How can we communicate with our donors over time? Uh, and then also how can we steward those relationships over time? The same thinking applies to your volunteers, to your staff, to your clients, uh, and to the public at large. And the question you want to ask yourself when you're filling out this matrix is you could potentially just put an X in the boxes that are important, or ideally if you want to go for extra credit, put a number in there, 1 through 5, 1 through 10, uh, you know, where 10 is the top priority, it's absolutely mission critical, and it's a huge opportunity. Uh, and one is something that you know it's, it's at the bottom of the pile, basically. So the idea is you want to identify what are the crucial applications that mobile can help you with. Again, it's a tool, uh, but if you don't know what you're trying to do with the tool, it's not very helpful. I also want to add one other sort of initial comment here, which is that you know I'm going to cover some best practices and some of the things that other people have done, but don't be afraid to get creative. Don't be afraid to kind of do something a little bit different than what you've seen out there and really be innovative as it relates to how to leverage these tools. The Marine Mammal Center, which is a great nonprofit located here in the San Francisco Bay Area um, that works with uh, you know, sort of rescued and injured uh, sea animals, they did something really cool. They just recorded little snippets of the animals that they serve and they gave those away for free as ringtones. Of course, in order to get that ringtone, you had to give them your email, like them on Facebook, etc. And so they started out uh, by, uh, you know, really making sure that they gave people something of value, and then in exchange, they opened up an ongoing relationship to them. Now, as far as getting off the ground here, uh, there's a couple things that I want to comment on. Starting with mobile websites, this is something that's really important uh, given how, uh, how many folks are already accessing content uh, through the web. And it looks like Barb has a question actually. And so Barb, do you want to chat that at me? Uh, or it looks like you're going to chat it to Becky. So happy to answer that question in just a sec. Um, now, as far as uh, mobile websites, we'll dive into that. We're really going to look at websites versus mobile apps in particular. I want to share a couple quick tips about, uh, about text to give just because that is such a powerful platform and opportunity. Uh, we will talk about mobile apps and kind of dive into that. 
Uh, we're going to look at how to integrate your mobile platforms with uh, your social media presence. Um, so in any case, uh, the point is we're going to look at how to integrate social media with your mobile presence. Uh, we'll talk a bit about staffing, uh, and then we'll also look at, uh, we'll look at the analytics and optimization side. And again, we're going to cover these, uh, we're going to cover these in, uh, in brief. And really the purpose of today's webinar is to be a primer that covers the entire spectrum and really is the primer code for the other webinars that are coming. So we'll kind of touch on all these different topics and hopefully leave you with a basic and working understanding uh, that you can use to take your cause mobile. So first of all, should you put energy into building an app or a mobile website? And I'm going to send out a link right now uh, that uh, is for a blog I just wrote for Beth Cantor. Uh, and it really talks specifically about this issue. Uh, now what I was saying is I just sent a link out for Beth Cantor uh, and the blog that I wrote for her on specifically this issue of should your nonprofit uh, have a mobile friendly website or should you put the energy and the resources into building a mobile application. Let's talk about that. Um, and part of what you'll see if you read that article is the top line is first and foremost you want to start with making your website mobile friendly. And the reason for that is that people are already accessing your website through their mobile devices. About 30% of overall traffic to the web is currently coming from phones and tablets. And so people are already looking at your site through these mechanisms, and you want to make sure that your site is optimized, that it's responsive is the term, meaning that your website will notice what kind of device is being used to access it and will share content appropriately that size to the screen. Uh, and so that's really the, the starting point. Mobile apps are an additional expense. They can be great opportunity on a couple different levels, uh, but they're sort of a nice to have, whereas a mobile friendly website is absolutely crucial because of the 30% on average of people that are already looking at your site that way. And also research that shows if your site is not mobile optimized, the people that come to your website through a phone, through a tablet, and have a suboptimal experience, the vast majority of the time they're not coming back. And so this is something that is a really important starting point. What are the opportunities with mobile websites? Well, first of all, uh, it's something that can be seen by anybody with a browser, whether that's on their phone, whether that's on their tablet, or other devices. Uh, it is something that's relatively static, meaning that the content is going to be similar. It will just be resized. Uh, if you make your website responsive. What you can do is actually create a separate website for devices so that uh, in that responsive environment when the software says, oh, this person is coming to me from a phone, you can have them see a different version of the website where you can kind of segment out the different content. Uh, and so that way instead of having one long page for example or one long donation form, you can just ask people for three questions and then have them go to the next screen. That's definitely a best practice. Now the downside with mobile website is it does require an Internet connection. If somebody is, I, I would normally say on a plane, but uh, now we have Wi-Fi on planes, but if somebody is in a place where they don't have Wi-Fi or Internet access, they're not going to be able to see your website. Uh, and also, uh, you know, it does have some limited features. There are some opportunities with mobile apps that you simply can't integrate into a website. Now, on the upside, the good news is mobile sites are pretty quick. Uh, the cost to develop one is pretty minimal, especially if you're just making your current website more mobile friendly. You don't need approval. It's something you can just do on your own. Uh, and so that's really standpoint. When we look on the other side of the coin at mobile apps, uh, again, this is an additional cost, and it can be quite expensive depending upon what you're looking at. The good news is that once people install this app, they can 
access it really quickly, very easily. It allows you to push content to them. Lot, a lot of functionality here. Uh, you can also make a very interactive uh, platform, so something that is more engaging than a standard website. It's something that they don't need an Internet connection to access. They can look at it while they are offline. Maybe they are down in the subway or whatever the case may be. Uh, and you can also integrate different phone features. That could be the GPS. It could be the camera. Uh, you know, there's a lot. Basically, phones are mini computers nowadays. And so uh, using them as an opportunity to engage your constituents can be really powerful. They are incredibly quick as I said. Once they have them installed, uh, folks are able to access that content and functionality really easily. Now the downside is that they do take some money and some time to develop. It can be anywhere from a couple thousand dollars to a couple hundred thousand dollars depending upon your budget and the scope of functionality you are looking for. You do also need, if you, especially if you are looking to get this app into the Apple uh, you know, App Store uh, or the Android Store, you need to go through an approval process. Uh, and so that can be complicated. Now the alternative is if you are just creating an app and people are downloading it directly through your website, then that is not necessarily an issue. Uh, but it is something that if you are hoping to get it out there to the public, is something you should be aware of. So again, the top line is start with making your website mobile friendly and even potentially making an alternate version of your website for mobile devices. Uh, and once you have that as your basis, then you can start to look at the opportunities with mobile apps. Now as far as mobile websites in particular, a couple of important things to note. Uh, as recently as last year, more smartphones were sold in the United States than feature phones. Those are kind of the regular traditional phones. So people do have these little computers in their pockets. Uh, if you can make your website mobile friendly or even develop a, you know, an alternate version of your site for mobile, the first step in that process is going to be benchmarking your current traffic. And using a free tool like Google Analytics, you can very easily tell where are your people coming from? Where are visitors to your website coming from? Is it 30% which is the average number that are coming from phones and tablets? Or is it 60% in your case? If the number is 60%, well then certainly there should be more pressing priority for your organization. Also looking at uh, you know, this notion of having a responsive website and being able to tell specifically what kind of mobile device people are accessing your site through. Especially if they are looking at it through a phone with a relatively small screen, then you may want to create that alternative mobile website that again has the content chunked out so that people aren't trying to scroll through a long page. Scrolling is something that uh, in all cases we really want to try to avoid on the small screen because people get tired of it uh, and because they are much more likely to leave. I mentioned at the very beginning of this webinar, the party has already started. People are already accessing the web and especially email through mobile devices. And so you need to meet them where they are at. And mobilizing your website is a great opportunity to do that. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about cross-platform integration. So whether that means social media, which we'll get into, uh, looking at your direct mail campaigns, looking at your website, you know, etc. You want to make sure that these are all talking to each other. It could be sending out a press release, uh, including a link or a notice in your direct mail piece saying, "Hey, we now have a mobile website." You want to let your community know that you are ready for them and that you're catering to their needs. Uh, I mentioned earlier that mobile websites are accessible via any browser. So that's really helpful. And it makes them very accessible from a standpoint of your audience uh, and a very diverse audience accessing this content. From a fundraising standpoint, uh, the good news about uh, taking donations through your mobile website is that it's just like taking donations through your site, meaning you can process donations in real time and folks can sign up for recurring gifts. 
You can also integrate those donors into your CRM platform, whether that's BlackBot, uh, you know, Salesforce.com, etc. And so any of those platforms that are helping you manage your constituent relationships, that are helping you de delineate between your donors and your staff and your VIPs and communicate them more effectively, that can all be mapped in to your mobile fundraising. Uh, I talked about being able to leverage different functionality from your phone so that uh, you know, with an app you can tie into the camera, the GPS, etc. With mobile websites you can also integrate into the GPS so you can know where your folks are and where they are accessing you from. Really helpful information depending upon your programs and your focus. Uh, and then finally as it relates to mobile websites is that you can use these QR codes. And these are those funky little black and white codes that you see uh, on posters and at an events and, uh, you know, and even in, uh, in stores sometimes. Well, when people scan those with a free QR code reader, that can take them directly to your mobile site. It can also take them to your social media presence, uh, to a registration page for an event, etc. But you want to know that the vast majority of folks that are accessing QR codes, probably about 99% are doing that through phones and tablets. So really good uh, collaborative opportunity with your mobile website. This is just you know, a quick data point of one specific nonprofit, Movember. They're the ones that do that great campaign to raise money uh, around cancer and, uh, and prostate cancer for men where guys grow a mustache for the month of November. Uh, well, they shared some data, and this is about to get updated in that new PayPal Network for Good study, showing that they saw about a 50% increase over 2011 and 2012 in terms of the percentage of people that were accessing their website via mobile. Uh, and this is back in 2012 that they had 30%. So they're obviously a bit ahead of the curve, uh, and certainly justification for them focused even more so on mobile. Uh, and Lisa asked a question, by the way, about QR codes. Uh, and really the notion here is are they still being used a lot? QR codes are still quite popular. Uh, the data that I've seen is that about 30 to 40 percent of people have a QR code reader on their phone and regularly access them. Uh, the data shows that if you're targeting youth, you know, folks in their teens or in their 20s, that QR codes are quite popular with them. And I've seen data as high as 60 to 80 uh, percent. And so depending I mean, especially if you're working with youth and doing outreach to youth, QR codes can be a really powerful uh, platform. And again, especially when mapped to your mobile website. Website. Think about with traditional websites, 40% of people that come to a regular website through their computer are going to bail if it takes more than three seconds to load, uh, and 80% of those folks. Are Return. What do you think is going to happen to access your site via their mobile device? Right? It's fundamentally an even less patient medium because people are on their phone when they're on the go, they're on the bus, etc. Uh, and in general, they're not as patient as when they're accessing content through a desktop device. For the most part, you want to look at a two second. So the point I was making is that you know, mobile is a fundamentally less patient environment, and so you really want to be looking at about two seconds uh, in terms of how long you have before someone is going to leave your mobile website. So you want to optimize it for that experience. I talked earlier about the notion of creating sort of a mobile-specific website and your donation page is really the crucial part that you want to start with first and foremost. Uh, and the simple tip that you want to integrate, which you can see illustrated here, is instead of having sort of that one standard donate page uh, that might be a little long and that people would have to scroll through as I talked about before, you want to have different pages, each of which is only about one screen long. That will immediately increase your fundraising results through mobile devices typically on average about 20 to 30 percent. So let's get into text to donate. Um, 
Now, text to donate is really something that became popular after the Haiti earthquake. Uh, the Red Cross did a big campaign, raised about $14 million in three hours. Uh, because they got a lot of promotion around this, they also had the good fortune of having a lot of the fees waived that can be associated with this. So there are some different providers, and when I get to the tips and tools section, I'll share some links for those. Uh, but the point is, this is the notion of you know, text Dolphin to 36334, uh, and you'll make a $10 donation, or text 10 to 36444, and you'll make a $10 donation. You can kind of do it with a set amount um, where there's just a, you know, a specific word, or you can have people text in a number. Really, really simple. Maps great to events. Uh, and so if you're doing a large-scale event or a gala, that can be uh, really helpful. Um, there is typically a minimum donation uh, size of 10 to $15. Uh, so you know you do want to keep that in mind, and typically you know you're going to want to keep a close eye on the fees as well. Uh, and Kelly is mentioning a point about unless you're making 500k annually uh, in terms of your nonprofit's budget, that you're not really able to use text to donate. Uh, that is not the case. It really depends on the service provider you're working with. It may well be the case that if you're a small grassroots organization text to donate isn't for you, whether that's because you don't have access to a large scale audience, you're not doing a big event, um, or the, you know, the startup or you know, uh, commission costs can be cost prohibitive. But for the most part, if you feel like even if you're a small group uh, with a very small budget, you have a big concert or a big event coming up, and you want people to do text to donate, it's certainly worth looking into some of the platforms that I'll cover later. Um, one of the downsides, or two of the downsides really, with text to donate is that uh, for the most part, the platforms out there do not allow you to do recurring gifts. It's really a one-time thing and kind of an impulse buy, uh, if you will. Uh, and also, typically, you're going to need to wait one to three months to actually get those donations. So uh, that is you know, something that you're going to want to keep in mind. Um, but something, something to note if you're getting into text-to-gift campaigns. Uh, from a revenue standpoint, uh, what we're seeing right now is a lot of nonprofits, uh, a lot of nonprofits are seeing about 5% of their revenue online donations coming through mobile devices, uh, and that's out of about 15% total uh, that are coming through online contributions on average. So again, about a third. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, it is important to note that mobile contributions are doubling every year. So this is a huge growth opportunity. Uh, and Julie, just to answer your quick question about why does it take one to three months to get your cash, it's really just a matter of the nature of how the different platforms and service providers are set up. Uh, and it takes them a while to process those donations. The technology is relatively new. Uh, I would assume that time frame is going to get shorter over time. Now let's get into apps. Uh, first off, as I mentioned, again, the first step you want to do here uh, is mobilize your website, make it mobile friendly, and ideally even create sort of an alternative version of your website. And then, and only then, do you want to start considering building out a mobile app. Uh, if you are going to build out a mobile app, and in particular if you're looking to get it sort of adopted by the public, you want to make sure that you have a strategy in place in advance for marketing that app and for getting it approved in, an, in the app stores. Uh, and so you want to know what you're getting into because this is not an if you build it, they will come thing. Uh, you, know, you certainly want to have a link to it on your website and things like that. But if you're looking to reach a new audience through this app, then you're going to need to have a plan in place for getting the app out there, and you're going to want to do everything you can to make sure that this app is going to be approved and that you're designing it with those approval requirements in mind in advance. You're also going to want to plan on developing this app across multiple platforms. Uh, Android and Apple are the two most common and most popular, so at the very least, most likely you're going to want to design for those two. Windows is getting more popular now, uh, especially with Microsoft's acquisition of Nokia. And so uh, that's a platform to take a look at. 
But the good news is through some of the analytics tools, you can tell not only what percentage of people are accessing your website through mobile, uh, but also what types of mobile devices and which operating systems they are using. And then you can map that information to your priorities from a development standpoint. Now from a fundraising standpoint, mobile apps are great. If you can get folks to donate through those, you get that cash real time. You can take recurring gifts just like on your website, and you can integrate that, that data uh, for those donor contributions into your CRM platforms. Really, really great uh, fundraising opportunity. The other thing uh, that I want to say really quickly about mobile apps though, is that if you are going to develop them, in addition to the upfront considerations, which operating systems, how are we going to market it, how do we get this approved uh, you know, from the app stores, etc., it is not a one and done thing. You need to plan to develop that app across those platforms, but then you also need to budget time and personnel for follow-on support to keep the app updated. That could be with content. It could be with you know, patching bugs or what have you. Uh, but you want to keep the app dynamic uh, and know that it, you're going to need to put some resources into it on an ongoing basis. So let's talk about social media because this is certainly one of my favorite topics. And uh, you know, I spent five years running, uh, helping to co-produce uh, and co-found the Social Media for Nonprofit series. Huge opportunity from, you know, again, this is another tool, whether it's for fundraising, marketing, advocacy, uh, and better engaging your constituents in delivering programs. Social media is a really powerful opportunity. Um, and uh, what I want to say specifically though as it relates to mobile is that you want to make sure that when you're sharing content, uh, that it's content that can easily be shared via mobile. Uh, so that could be a tweet. It could be something where with the click of a button, people are able to follow you on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, they're also able to share content that you're sending through their social networks. So you want to make those buttons big, easily accessible, and right next to the content that you're posting. You also want to post mobile-friendly links. So tools like Bitly are your friend uh, because they can help shorten those links. And again, people are using their mobile devices. That means they're typically accessing this content on a small screen. A link that's you know, two miles long and they're not going to be able to see this, the whole thing uh, is going to be less attractive to folks than a short abbreviated link. Not to mention tools like Bitly can also offer you uh, free analytics support. So really good opportunity there. Uh, and finally, if your nonprofit is on Pinterest, which is a great platform if number one, uh, you have a lot of good imagery that comes out of your work, and number two, if you're targeting women. About two-thirds of their audience are female. Uh, so if you're on Pinterest, if you're active, uh, keep in mind your mobile strategy when you're pinning posts. Are these things that can easily be shared via mobile and that are relevant to mobile users. Now the good news is from a social media integration standpoint, the folks that are accessing the web through their mobile devices are using it in large part, not the majority, but about a third of their time, uh, they are using it to access social media, to check their Facebook, to check their Twitter, check their Pinterest or YouTube. Um, so really great opportunity uh, to talk to folks about your social presence. The other thing that's equally as important is that people that are on uh, social media and that are on mobile accessing your website and, and uh, your mobile app uh, are more likely, they are about twice as likely to share content through social media. They are two-thirds as likely to retweet. Uh, they are 40% more likely to engage with your Facebook content, meaning they like, comment, or share your posts. And they are three times as, as likely to share pins on Pinterest. So uh, really, really good opportunity to reach folks and then to have them support your message by taking it viral and, and sharing the message with their friends. So let's get into staffing and talk about a couple considerations from an HR standpoint. What are some things to keep in mind as you are looking to staff your mobile presence, whether that is your mobile website, your mobile app, uh, or some of the more infrastructure questions, uh, infrastructure-oriented questions that we will get into in that fourth webinar? Uh, 
So first of all, uh, for the most part, whether it's your mobile app, whether it's mobile fundraising, etc., uh, it is typically a mistake to have technology and operations folks overseeing this part of your organization. Uh, for the most part, most nonprofits are leveraging mobile uh, as a marketing strategy, and it's really a tool that they're using to achieve marketing goals. It could be fundraising. It could also be programmatic goals. But the point is you want the folks that are overseeing the goal and the objective uh, to be overseeing this component of your work, and again, using it as a tool. You wouldn't have uh, you know, the technology team overseeing uh, you know, something that uh, really is more in, in the realm of fundraising, of marketing, uh, of advocacy. Those are the teams that have that programmatic expertise that should be overseeing how this tool is used. Again, uh, you also want to plan for updates. I talked about this in the mobile app section, uh, but it's also true for your mobile website. It's also true uh, for your mobile presence with social media, etc. You want to keep that content fresh, and you want to be able to integrate technological updates. Uh, and then finally, uh, is ideally, instead of just having one person devoted to overseeing your mobile presence, and the same is also true for social media, many hands make light work. You want to try and divvy up the load and have multiple people contributing, uh, whether that's to your posts on Facebook and Twitter, or whether that's to maintaining your mobile strategy. That has a couple benefits. First of all, uh, you know, if you have lots of people sharing the load, then if one person is out sick or leaves the organization, it doesn't fall down. Right? The strategy continues. Uh, and then also, especially from a social media integration standpoint, the reality is that people don't give to organizations, they give to people. And so as a result, it's really helpful to let the various voices of your organization shine through. Uh, and that's also helpful from a standpoint of different people have different areas of expertise. And so one person can comment about uh, your upcoming fundraising campaign, and the other can talk about an advocacy campaign, for example. Now the trick to doing that, whether it's with social media or it's with mobile, uh, is how do you know if you've got five people each posting for an hour a week instead of one person posting for five hours, uh, you know, how do you know what's been said and what's going to be said and done? And that can be a pickle. It can also be horribly inefficient to spend a lot of time talking to your colleagues or looking at what's been posted, logging to Facebook, etc. Not the best use of time. So the way to do that is through leveraging an editorial calendar. And that's a very simple tool, and I can send you a free, uh, free template, a spreadsheet uh, as a follow-up if anyone wants to email me. And I'll have my email up in just a second. But the idea is that that's a really simple tool, a calendar that maps out who is saying what, where, when. Meaning, I know that Becky is going to send out a tweet tomorrow at noon about our upcoming gala. And then I'm going to send out a Facebook post Thursday at 5 p.m. about our need for volunteers. Uh, and Ariel is going to put up a blog showcasing, uh, showcasing this year's keynote speaker. Right? So that level of detail is sufficient to let people know sort of what's expected of them, where, and when. Really, really helpful tool. Uh, from an analytics standpoint, a couple quick points on that before we dive into the tips and tools and wrap it up. Uh, and again, happy to take any questions that folks have as we go through the webinar. But from an analytics standpoint, using a free tool like Google Analytics, the biggest thing you want to take a look at is what percentage of your traffic is coming from mobile. Again, typical is 30%. If you're way over that, this should be a bigger priority for you. You also want to look not just at how people are accessing your website, is it mobile, is it desktop, but you want to look at your conversion rate. Typically for nonprofits, that's defined as a donation, and you can add a tag very easily and for free on the thank you page, thanks for donating. It could also be, and you could have multiple conversions, another one might be filling out a petition uh, or clicking a button to contact you a congressman, things like that. You want to track those conversion rates and you want to track them over time because if they start to go down, something may be amiss. There may be a new uh, operating system upgrade that you're not uh, up to date with. 
So you know, there could be some problems there. Something in your site might have gotten a bug, uh, and that could be causing the site to load slowly, which could be indicated by people leaving the site. They come, they look at it for one page, and they don't click around. It takes too long to load, and they take off. If that uh, bounce rate goes up, that could be an indicator that there's a problem. This is what uh, you know, kind of a typical mobile analytics report looks like. And again, you can see what operating system people are accessing uh, you know, your website through. You can also track their behavior. How many people are you reaching? How many of them are leaving right away? How many of them are actually converting? Uh, and then uh, I know that we just had a link sent out uh, to an uh, editorial calendar article uh, that Beth Cantor posted. Really, really helpful article. So with that said, that was kind of a lot of the meat that I wanted to cover in the webinar. But let me just bring it home with a couple quick tips and tools to leave you with as you're moving forward. So first of all, make sure you're adding value. Right? You don't, this is not just about you and your cause. Whether it's giving them a free, uh, you know, a free ringtone, or whatever the case may be, what's in it for your visitors? That's got to be a really primary question. Secondly, remember the two-second rule. It's the three-second rule with your regular website. It's two seconds with mobile. Be quick, be to the point, uh, and make sure you're getting that message across quickly and that you're not weighing down your website with stuff that's going to make it uh, longer to load. Donate buttons. Because you're dealing with a smaller screen, for your mobile website, you want that donate button at the top and the bottom of every page on your website. Uh, and in general, you want to keep each of these pages as simple as possible. Uh, so you want to focus on one call to action. Is it donate? Is it sign this petition? Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, come to our gala. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, text is problematic. You can use it certainly, uh, and you want to be aware of the font size. But if you can use even more so than you would typically with your website and with social media, if you can use photos and videos, uh, that is a really great way to communicate with people through mobile. Especially if it's a long video though, you don't want to add too much else to the page because again, you want to make sure the load time uh, is quick. And don't be afraid to embrace white space. You don't want text or images right on top of each other. With mobile, you want to separate stuff out so that people have a little bit more time and space between different content. Um, again, this is really uh, you know, a point to keep in mind, uh, especially with your donate page, is you want to keep scrolling to a minimum. One of the things you can do is you can have sections basically zipped up and then people can click on those to expand them out if they want to learn more. If you are using buttons, whether it's your donate page, uh, your donate button, or any other buttons on your site, you want to make sure that those are big enough that people can very easily click on them without their kind of finger uh, you know, uh, going over. So 30 by 30 pixels is kind of a good starting point. Just like you want to make sure people are going to be able to press that button, you want to make sure they're able to press hyperlinks. So you don't want two hyperlinks right next to each other because then they may accidentally hit the wrong one. I mentioned Google Analytics and the great reports that they make available. They also specifically have a mobile performance report, which is the one I showed you earlier. Uh, so use that as a tool. It is freely available to nonprofits. We talked about QR codes, especially at an, at an event. Those can be really handy. Um, and then you know, one last tip I wanted to mention is that from an email standpoint, you want to make sure before you send out that next newsletter, that next blast email, that you are looking at that test email on a mobile device to see what it looks like. This is something that more and more people are accessing emails through their smartphones, through their tablets, it is now over 50%, in fact over 60% of email that is accessed in that way. So something that is really crucial to keep in mind. Uh, you also want to recognize that from an email standpoint, and this is why it's important to test this out on your mobile device, if that email is not optimized for mobile, then people are going to delete or close that email. They're not going to read it. 
over 60% of people. Uh, so when we're talking about 61% of, of people are accessing email on a mobile device, and over 60 of them are not going to read it unless it's optimized for them, this is crucial. Uh, you know, and the final thing I wanted to share before I dive into a couple uh, quick resources and links is that depending upon how people are accessing your website, uh, the day of week that you send out your email newsletter may need to vary. If most of the folks are accessing it through their desktop, well then you want to send that email during the week, typically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mid-morning or mid-afternoon, about 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. are the best times to send an email when people are reading it on their desktop. However, if your audience is very heavily accessing it uh, through, uh, through their mobile device, then hey, send it on the weekend if that's the way that people are going to integrate uh, and interact with your content. You generally want to wait a little bit later on the day, uh, in the day when you're, you're talking to folks via mobile, uh, especially if it's on the weekend because people tend to sleep in a little bit more than they do during the week. So a couple quick resources to end with here. Uh, you, know, you heard a bit about TechSoup. Amazing resource, especially as you're buying software and other technology devices. Definitely something you want to take advantage of. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about our offer on TechSoup in just a second. I mentioned in 10, our partner, Beth Cantor, has a great blog including a couple of links that have been sent out. Our friends at Network for Good specifically launched the fundraising123.org website to share fundraising content with nonprofits. Uh, PayPal also has worked with them to create a whole slew of different mobile research and content. Google uh, has their google.com forward slash nonprofits link where you can get access to Google Analytics. I mentioned that quite a few times as well as uh, Google Grants where you can get $10,000 a month of free advertising on Google for your nonprofit. Uh, and then they also have their GOMO uh, which is basically uh, you know, looking at how nonprofits can go mobile and specific tips for leveraging mobile as a nonprofit. From a mobile specific standpoint, I talked about some of those different text to give and mobile fundraising platforms as well as platforms to help you mobilize your website. Here's five right here, Guide by Cell, Mobile Cause, Mobile Accord, Mobile Commons, and Give by Cell. Uh, those are all really great resources and I would encourage you to check those out and see if any of those are appropriate for your organization. Uh, again, I'm not here to encourage you to adopt one platform over another, uh, but I would encourage you to read Heather Mansfield's book, Mobile for Good, which does a really great job diving into what Mobile for Good looks like and specifically uh, what mobile uh, looks like from a fundraising standpoint. And finally, uh, before I hand it back over to Becky, I just want to say uh, that you know, mobile is the future. That as you think about uh, diversifying your donor database and getting more next generation leaders in there, it's really crucial to think about mobile. And just one last stat I wanted to end with is that the average age nowadays for someone to get their first mobile phone is 13. So the future is mobile and your audience uh, is on mobile and it's a great, great opportunity for your organization to reach potential supporters. Uh, this has my mobile phone as well as my Twitter handle and my email on here. If anybody wants that editorial calendar template or the mobile matrix template, please feel free to email me directly. Uh, and in general, I am at your disposal. We love working with TechSoup. Uh, we're incredibly honored to be partnered with them as we launch Better World Wireless, and we'd love to work with, uh, with any of you and supporting you and your needs and answering any follow-on questions that you might have. So let me hand it over to Becky real quick. I know she had a couple quick points she wanted to make, and please feel free to chime in with any additional questions that haven't been covered. Thank you for that, Darian. That was great. Um, I was just having this conversation with somebody about what age uh, I should get my kid some, a cell phone. And a lot of people are doing it. Uh, parents who have young kids now are thinking 7, 8, 9. So it's trending even younger, oh, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, we had a couple of questions, but before we get into that, I want to just quickly mention the Better World Wireless program and the donation program that they've made available through TechSoup where they provide access to discounted mobile services and devices to eligible nonprofit organizations, charities, and public libraries. So 
if you are looking for mobile for your staff or for yourself or even extended to your family and volunteers of your organization, um, definitely check out the offer that's available there. I just chatted out the link to that program as well and will include it in the follow-up email. Um, I want to make sure we've got a time just to answer a couple of questions. So I'll jump into that quickly and then we'll wrap up. So Kelly asked, I read that unless you are a $500,000 organization or more annually, that you don't qualify to use text to give options. Do you know if that's the case? Yeah, we talked about that a little bit before. I don't know if that's when I might have broken up for a bit there. And again, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, I do not believe that's the case. So it may well be uh, the case that some of those different platforms and providers that I mentioned earlier, that they do have minimum requirements. Um, but for the most part, those guys are going to charge you some kind of setup fee and then a percentage of the money that you raise. Uh, and so it might be the case that some of them are less interested in working with smaller budget organizations because they don't raise as much money. Um, but there are definitely different platforms out there that will work with you no matter what your budget size. Uh, and so again, I would, I would reference the links that I shared out, and I'll um, put that page back and up right here. Great. And we'll, we'll include that in the follow-up email as well. It will come out in a, a little bit after this webinar. Um, we also have a question from Joan that I thought would be good to answer just because it's I think something that people may not be aware of. But when it comes to tablets, how large of a tablet should somebody have to be referred to a mobile site versus a regular full-fledged desktop website? If they are on a 10-inch versus a 7-inch, does it make a difference? Yeah, I mean I think, uh, Joan, thanks for the question. And, and typically what we see is when people are at a 10-inch and above, they are they're comfortable seeing a standard version sort of desktop version of the website. Uh, when they are 7-inch or smaller including phones, that's when they are looking more for an optimized experience that's really geared towards that uh, form factor. And so uh, I hope that's Terrific. helpful. Uh, yeah, for sure. And also I just wanted to thank Becky for mentioning the offer on TechSoup. Two quick things I wanted to say about that. One is that um, there's two different offers up there. One is 5% off of all of our different calling plans. The other is 5% off with a free $500 smartphone. Um, and you do need to be a TechSoup member to sign up for that. There's a $10 fee to, to redeem the offer. But then that code can be used not only by you and by your organization, but by your family, uh, by your donors, by your volunteers, etc. And this is actually the first time TechSoup has made an offer available to the broader nonprofit community through its members. So we're really excited to partner with them in that context. That's great, and we are as well. Um, just so that people have the information in front of them, we'll also share these links to the upcoming webinars. But these are the other webinars that we'll be presenting in this Mobile Impact Series. So you can hear from some of the other uh, seminal experts in the field on developing digital content strategies, how to raise money via mobile, and how to really embed um, mobile technology in your office and help your staff and employees sort of embrace mobile policies. We also have other upcoming webinars, including next week we'll be covering Getting Started with QuickBooks 2014 on Thursday. And then we also will be talking about Office 365 next Friday. Uh, following later in the month, you can learn more about an app that TechSoup has developed through our Caravan program around helping youth find free meals this summer. So if you work with youth in your community, this would be a great webinar that you could access. Thank you so much, Darian, for the wonderful presentation. We are just a couple of minutes over time, so I'm going to wrap us up. You will get the follow-up email later on today with this full presentation and all the links we discussed. So don't worry about trying to scribble notes down. Uh, thank you also to Allie on the back end helping to field those questions. And lastly, thank you to our webinar platform ReadyTalk for providing the use of their platform for our webinars each week. We hope that you will join us again. Like I mentioned, some of those other webinars coming up. and have a terrific day. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.